In today's business case study, we're going to learn about Infosys. We'll learn about Infosys from the scratch, from when it got founded in the year 1981 in Pune to its headquarter now in Bangalore and its gigantic campus in Mysore. Infosys, which once was a small company which started with garage in Mysore, today it is one of the top IT services company of the world and second largest IT company after TCS, that is Tata Consultancy Services in India. In the year 2021 fiscal year, Infosys had a revenue of 1 lakh crore rupees. By 2022, its employees have grown up to 3 lakh 50 thousand. Before we move forward, if you're somebody who have come to our channel new, ensure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss on any of these business case studies. Now let's learn about Infosys history from the scratch. History of Infosys. Infosys was founded by seven engineers in Pune, which includes Narayan Murthy by major contribution. Its initial capital was $250. So it started with a capital of $250. Dollar rate to rupee in 1918 was 8.66. Yes, you heard it right. It's exactly 10 times lower than the current value of dollar to rupees. So 8.66 into $250, 2,165 Indian rupees was the capital of Infosys when it started in 1981 to today a company which is 100 billion dollar market capitalization value so if you're somebody who want to enhance your skills in the real world experience then this is for you if you're somebody who come from a technical background or if you're somebody who's looking to do an mba then this is the statistics in india in india a normal mba costs about four to five lakhs rupees and the rate of placement is about five to eight percent in average MBA colleges. The ecosystem of startup in India doesn't require the qualified MBA from these average MBA colleges. Whereas hundreds of startups looks only for the skill-based MBA people or the people who have knowledge about the business. If you're someone who have technical knowledge and want to integrate with the leadership knowledge, or if you're somebody who's looking to do an MBA, join this free webinar where you'll get to network with hundreds of professionals all together and you'll know exactly where do you got to do this. The link is in the description. So what is 100 billion dollars in Indian rupees? It's more than 8,20,000 crore rupees. And also Infosys is the fourth only company in India to reach a market capitalization of 100 billion dollars that is 8,20,000 crore rupees. Now let's take a look of Infosys revenue, profit and all those financial aspects. A quick look so that you'll understand how big is Infosys before we know in detail about it. Infosys revenue in 2022 was 1,23,936 crore rupees. In US dollars, it's 16 billion dollars. Its operating income was 30,110 crore rupees. In US dollars, it's 3.8 billion dollars. Its net income was 22,146 crore rupees. Now, this is the interesting fact. Its net income, after all the expenses, including salaries to all the operating expenses, it got a net income of 22,000 crore plus out of a net revenue of more than 1,23,000 crore in 2022. Now let's look into the assets which Infosys own, which includes the gigantic campuses in Bangalore, Mysore, Pune and across the world. Its total assets was 1,17,885 crore rupees. In US dollars, it's 15 billion dollars. In our previous videos, we had learned about a startup being valued at a billion dollar, a 10 billion dollar. Now this is a huge company which had established itself with only an assets of 15 billion dollars that's more than 1 lakh crore rupees. What Infosys own with all its office and campus across the world. Now let's look into a little bit more about its history. 
As discussed earlier, Infosys initial capital was two fifty dollars. That's close to about two thousand two hundred rupees in nineteen eighty one. It was registered as Infosys Consultants Private Limited on second July nineteen eighty one. In 1983, it relocated to Bangalore, Karnataka. The company changed its name to Infosys Technologies Private Limited in April 1992, and to Infosys Technologies Limited when it came a public limited company in June 1992. It was renamed Infosys Limited in June 2011. So Infosys had changed its name, and it had relocated from Pune, where it started initially. to bangalore has its headquarter to mysore has its main training campus as it has changed its name now another interesting factor to know is it went on public in 1992 now what is a public limited company we've already discussed about an ipo of zomato in our previous video and also about paytm now when a company goes to an ipo it is recognized as a public limited company now what is that exactly when a company decides to go into a stock market for example in india we have bsc that is bombay stock exchange where people can purchase its shares based on its initial offerings so now before public limited company what happens a company remains to be a private limited company funded by the external investors and then went on to reach to a height of ipo once it has grown and expanded now this we usually see a company or a startup grows takes investment from external investors we have also discussed about funding of initial from a startup seed round to series c in our previous video of rapido a bike taxi who has overtaken ola and uber if you have not watched that video then the link is in the description so when a company start has a startup it needs external funds from the external investors which are been funded by these angel investors initially in a seed round which we learned in a previous video plus it goes on to raise the funds continuously in series a round to series b series c series d e f this happens to a period of about 10 to 12 years this is an average period for all the companies which doesn't get closed what do i mean by doesn't gets closed if it doesn't gets liquidated now again for somebody who doesn't understand the management language or commerce language what is liquidation liquidation is a process where a company shuts down and it decides to sell off all its assets to preferential shares owners and the other shareholders now this liquidation happens if a company goes on to be a bankruptcy for a longer duration of time now let's come back to infosys now here in infosys it got founded in 1981 in 1992 it went on to an ipo this is a typical period an average period of 11 years it went on to public which is also listed in bsc that is bombay stock exchange and its current share price is 1516 we are shooting this video on november 3rd 2022 we have also discussed rishi sunak the uk prime minister is a son in law of infosys co founder narayan murthy and narayan murthy's daughter is been married to rishi sunak the uk prime minister which which has turned around the fortune for rishi sunak and have made him close to be a billionaire being a billionaire son in law not only that it has also made rishi sunak the uk prime minister to be richer than the uk prince if you have not watched that video then the link is in the description if you are here till now then don't miss this part let's know a little bit more about history and then go on to know more about infosys an initial public offering that is ipo which has already been discussed was floated in february 1993 by infosys with an offer price of 95 rupees at that time 1993 equivalent to rupees 580 or us dollar 7.30 at that time in 2020 per share against a book value of 20 the ipo was undersubscribed but it was bailed out by the us investment bank morgan stanley which picked up a 13% equity stake at offer price now this is the most important part to know that in the initial public offering itself the 13% stake was been picked up by the Morgan Stanley Bank of America another interesting fact is Infosys major clients today are banking services Infosys looks after their applications that is an app to its financial transaction with secure and safety 
more clients are from the abroad for Infosys. What do I mean by abroad? Infosys is an Indian company, but it also operates across the world and it has more clients from all the foreign country, mainly from the banking sector. And the interesting fact was the 13% stake was being picked up by a banking company of America at the early stage. Infosys shares were listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange in 1999 has American depository receipts. It, it became the first Indian company to be listed on NASDAQ. The share price surged to Rs. 8,100, equivalent to 30,000 today in 2020. So, Infosys was also the first Indian company to list in an American stock market. The share price, which surged to 8,100 rupees at that time in 1999, which is now converted to 30,000 plus, was among the highest, making it the costliest share on the market at that time in 1999. At that time, Infosys was among the 20 biggest companies by market capitalization on the NASDAQ. The ADR listing was shifted from NASDAQ to New York Stock Exchange, Euronext to give European investors better access to the company's share. On 28 July 2010, then British Prime Minister David Cameron visited Infosys headquarters in Bangalore and addressed Infosys employees. Its annual revenue reached US dollars 100 million in 1999 itself and US dollars 1 billion in 2004 and US dollar 10 billion in 2017. So, for you to understand here very clearly, in 1999, Infosys had reached 100 million dollars. If you convert in today's conversion rate, 100 million dollars is, it is 820 crore. And then it went on to reach 1 billion dollars in 2004. 1 billion dollars is 8,200 crores. 10 billion dollars in 2017. 10 billion dollars is 82,000 crore. And today in 2022, it has went on to reach 1,23,000 crore. The net profit of 22,000 crore plus. That was all about Infosys history. If you're here till here, don't miss all this. Products and services of Infosys. Now, the question here in everybody's mind is how Infosys reached to make a revenue of 1,23,000 crore from a scratch zero. There was a time in Infosys where Narayan Murthy, the co-founder of Infosys, had to pledge the gold of her wife, that is Sudha Murthy, to run the company in early 80s. And also there was a time in Infosys where Infosys had to wait for months together to get its first computer to start the services. Now what are the services which made Infosys that rich? Now let's look into its product and services. Infosys provides software development, maintenance and independent validation services to companies in finance, insurance, manufacturing and other domains. One of its best known products in Finacle, a universal banking solution with various modules for retail and corporate banking. Finacle, a universal product for retail banking and finance services. We'll make a different case study or video on Finacle in our next video. So Finacle is one of the premium product services of Infosys in today's date. Now let's look into its key products and services. That is number one, NIA. That is next generation integrated AI platform, formerly known as MANA, M-A-N-A. Infosys Consulting, number two, a global management consulting service. Number three, cloud-based enterprise transformation services. Number four, Infosys information platform, IIP and analytic platform. Number five, Edgeverb systems, which includes Finacle, a global banking platform. Number six, Panaya Cloud Suite. Number six, Scava, now Infosys Equinox. Number seven, engineering services and number eight, digital marketing. Let's look into the geographical presence of Infosys. Infosys is present across the world. Infosys has 82 sales and marketing offices and 123 development centers across the world as of 31st March 2018, with major presence in India, United States, China, Australia, Japan, Middle East and Europe. In 2019, 
and 3% of its revenue were derived from projects in North America, Europe and India respectively. The remaining 13% of revenues were derived from the rest of the world. The interesting fact here to know is 87% of its revenue come from three major areas of the world. That is North America which includes majorly USA, then European countries number two and number three India. The rest 13 persons come from the rest of the world. In 2022, Infosys presence in Russia in support of the energy industry, there came under scrutiny. The firm, unlike Western firms like Oracle, declined to withdraw from the country despite Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Now, that's something political. Let's not dive into it. But Infosys also had its presence in Russia in 2022 for any company or a startup to grow it requires continuous acquisitions now what is acquisition here a company has to see the competitors and if there is a chance buy out the competition which are still growing let's give you an example process is a big tree whereas its competitors are now growing like a small seed and from seed to a small pot plants so what does this happen here this small pot plant become big very soon and might be a competitor to Infosys. Hence, this acquisition takes place in from startups to big companies. Now, let's look into some of the acquisitions of Infosys. Infosys acquisitions. Number one, expert information services based in Australia. Acquisition cost was US dollar $23 million. It was acquired in December 2003. The business of an acquired company was IT service provider. Number two, MacChemist Systems, USA. It was acquired at the cost of US dollar $38 million. In the year December 2009, the business of an acquired company was insurance and financial services. Number three, Portland Group, Australia. It was acquired in $37 million in Australian dollars. In January 2012, the business of an acquired company was strategic sourcing and category management. Number four, Lodestone Holding AG, based in Switzerland. It was acquired at the cost of US dollar 345 million. In September 2012, the business of the acquired company was management consultancy. Panaya, it was based in Israel. It was acquired at US dollar 200 million. In March 2015, the business of an acquired company was automation technology. Scava, based out of USA, it was acquired at the cost of US dollar 120 million in April 2015. The business of an acquired company was digital experience solutions. Likewise, no consultancy, USA, it was acquired at 70 million in the year November 2015. The business of the acquired company was information management consultancy services. Infosys shareholding and stakeholders pattern has of 29 July 2021. These are the shareholders, promoters or group. And the next part is shareholding. Number one, foreign institutional investors has 33.39%. Promoters group, that is 12.95%. Now what is promoters group? These are the co-founders. Promoters group are the co-founders and the directors who had the early investment in the company or the shares. Domestic institutional investors, 21.98%. Now comes the main important point, that is public, 31.32%. So public means when it has gone on to an IPO, so from the shareholding market or stock market, the public owns 31.2%. And others, 0.36%. This is the shareholding pattern of Infosys. Employees. Now, Infosys was among the first company to distribute ESOPs to its employees in India. If you have not watched our video on ESOP, how an employee can make in crores, the link is in the description. Now, let's talk about the training center of Infosys, which is the next level of education for its employees before joining. Infosys has the world's largest corporate university. The Infosys Global Education Center is spread across in 337 acres in Mysore, Karnataka. Mysore is a place from where Narayan Murthy, the co-founder, comes from. And this world's 
largest corporate training center can train at once 14,000 plus employees. If you want to learn more about these 